So the first lecture is going to be on number systems. We are going to see how we can represent numbers in a variety of different formats. We'll take a look at a binary number system, a decimal number system, a hexadecimal format and an octal format. And we'll also take a look at some other number systems with a different base. The goal of all those representations is going to be to do some binary arithmetic, to be able to add binary numbers, to be able to multiply them, and so on. Um, the sections in the primary textbook are highlighted over here. So in case you want to purchase the book and read uh, the material for a deeper or, or, or a, a very detailed discussion, those are the sections in the textbook. So how do you represent numbers in decimal number system? Well, humans are very, um, uh, humans like this particular representation a lot. Why? The reason is we have 10 fingers and 10 toes and we can uh, count on our fingers. Um, so the number 10 is uh, very convenient for humans. And why 10? Why specifically 10 and not 5 or 15? The number 10 because the decimal number system has symbols, 10 of them, 10 symbols. What are those symbols? 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on up to 9. So any number in the decimal number system can be represented as a combination of any one of those 10 symbols, any one of them. Okay. So that's why we call it a decimal number and decimal means 10. Now, numbers in the decimal number system can be denoted using positional number notation or positional significance. So all we have to do is take the weight of each digit, multiply each digit with its weight and add them up. That's the positional weightage or positional significance of any number. And we have learned this in what? Elementary school. If you have a number, for example, 246, all you need to do is take the number 2, multiply it by its weight. What is the weight? Well, it is 10 raised to 2 or 100. Similarly, for 4, it is going to be 4 times 10 raised to 1. And for 6, it is going to be 6 times 10 raised to 0. So essentially, if you start all the way to the right, which is the least significant position. Digit. And this is the most significant in this case. So take the least significant, multiply it by 10 raised to 0, and then as you go left, all the way to the most significant digit, keep increasing the power of 10. Now the question is, why is 10? Why 10? Why not any other number? Well, because we are in the decimal number system, which has 10 digits. So that's why 10 keeps appearing in this notation. And once we have multiplied that with each of their uh, weights, you add them up. That's how you represent the number 246. Now that's an example. How about in the general case? For general case, for base 10, base 10 means the number notation is of the base 10. Base is also called as radix. Uh, which essentially means decimal number system. All you have to do is take each uh, digit n sub i, multiply it with 10 raised to i, where i goes from 0 
all the way to well uh, n sub i goes uh, could be uh, belongs to the set 0 to 9 and i essentially starts from 0 and keeps increasing uh, 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 as the number of digits in the number keep increasing so it starts at 0 so n sub 0 times 10 sub 0 uh, 10 power 0 plus and so on keep going as as long as you have the digits uh, after that eventually this number will become zero so it will not contribute anything to that sum so that's how you would in general represent base 10 representation um, this is in the general case um, how about negative exponents so all of that was for 0 1 2 i is i is increasing from 0 right so you, you can say i is greater than or equal to 0 here and in integer how about going negative well when you go negative you essentially get fraction part decimal fractions so if you have a number like 0 0.35 you can represent that using this positional significance significance as take 3 multiply with 10 raised to negative 1 because we stopped at 0 there so it starts with negative 1 over there and then 5 with 10 raised to negative 2 so to put these two together what you can say is how do I represent 246.35 well, you can say this number in base 10, parentheses, subscript 10, can be represented using positional number notation as 2 times 10 raised to 2 plus 4 times 10 raised to 1, 6 times 10 raised to 0, 3 times 10 raised to negative 1, 5 times 10 raised to negative 2. So all of that combined will give you the decimal number complete with some integer part and some fraction part. Um, in this case, unsigned numbers. So we'll begin our discussion with unsigned numbers. We are not looking the, uh, at them as positive and negative. We are just looking at them as without a sign um, decimal numbers. Now this positional significance concept can be useful, very useful when you are converting any number system to decimal. So you know you, you, you will see this appear a lot where you are multiplying it with increasing powers of the uh, base. Let's move on to binary representation. Binary representation has two digits, two symbols, 0 and 1. Same way to represent summation n sub i, where n sub i now belongs to 0, 1 because those are the two symbols, multiplied by increasing powers of the base. In this case, the base is 2, so 2 raised to i. Earlier, it was 10 raised to i. So how do, by the way, any number that you see in decimal number system will have to have all the symbols from 0 to 9. If you see a symbol in that number that does not belong to this set, that means that it is not a decimal number. Similarly, every number in the binary representation will have 0 or 1. If you see 2, that means it's not a binary number. So as you can see over here, this number 100, sorry, 111001. And I know it is represented in binary number system because there is a subscript 2. What I really like to do is put a parenthesis around it so that there is no confusion. I would recommend that you, you do that. Otherwise, there could be confusion. Is 2 a part of the number or it's a subscript? You know, sometimes it's difficult to read. So just use a parenthesis around the number and then clearly put the subscript down. 
let's take a moment here there's a question so if there is 10 raised to 10 then it does not belong to decimal representation no no no. so that does so 10 raised to 10 it does however this does not you see um let's see i will add a page here and talk about that so the number itself so the question is does this belong to does this number belong to decimal system uh zero one two a three four negative one twenty seven negative a point one zero four I have made up a few numbers and I want to know whether it belongs to the decimal number system or not. Over here, 0, 1 and 2. Each one of those digits belongs to that set. So, yes. A, 3, 4. Well, A is the problem here. A does not belong to the set 0 through 9. So, no. Negative 127. Yes. Again, A, no. So you have to take a look at uh, the number itself. 10 raised to 10 is what? 1 followed by all those bunch of zeros, right? So all of those things belong to that set. So yes, it does belong to decimal number system. So it's the individual digit that you are checking for. I hope that was helpful. Let's move on. Um, now, coming back to this example where we are trying to convert a binary number and I know it is definitely binary because or I should say it does look like it's binary because it is zeros and ones. There's no two in this number. One, 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 zero, zero, one. So it belongs to the binary number system. Um, we are trying to convert this binary uh, number from binary to decimal number system. All we have to do is use positional significance. So take this one, multiply it with 2 raised to 0. Take this 0, multiply it with 2 raised to 1. 0 again, multiply it with 2 raised to 2. 1, 2 raised to 3 and so on. So as you are moving from the least significant, this guy is the least significant, to the most significant bit. In this case, it's going to be bit. Bit means binary digit. We use digit for decimals. We use bit for binary. So as you are moving from least significant bit, to the most significant bit, all you are doing is you are multiplying each bit with increasing powers of 2. There is no fraction part there. They are all integer part. So the index or the power goes from 0 all the way to 5. You find those numbers, add those up, get your number in decimal number system. In this case 57, base 10. So if you want to convert from any number system to uh, decimal number system, all you have to do is multiply with increasing powers of 2. Let me write that down. Uh, any number system to decimal, how do you do it? You multiply with increasing power of base and add, right? Whatever you multiply, you just add all those individual results. That's how you convert any number system to decimal. 
How do you go back? Well, how do you convert decimal to binary? So, to go from binary to decimal or base 2 to base 10, we, mul we multiplied each bit with increasing powers of 2 and added them up. We did the multiplication or successive multiplication. So, to go back, we would have to do successive division. So, all you have to do is keep dividing the number in decimal by 2 and you will have to record the remainders. So, 57 divided by 2, you got 28. Remainder of 1. And you know that when I am dividing by 2, your remainder can only be 0 or 1. So, it will belong to the binary number system. Then you take 28, divide by 2. You got 14, which means remainder is 0. And you keep going down. All the way until you get the quotient to be 0. That's the, when you know you need to stop there. And you read the numbers, your answer in binary from, top, uh, some, from bottom to top. So, your number will be 111001 in binary. That's exactly what we had in the previous slide. I will work through some uh, examples for you to get some practice. But right now I would uh, say we can easily remember this. And of course there is a uh, analytical proof to this as well. Where you can actually take any arbitrary binary number and show that increasing, um, keep dividing or keep multiplying by 2, you can you can get those bits. Um, so, I, I'll be doing some examples. But right now, I want you guys to understand that when you're converting any number system to decimal, you keep multiplying by increasing powers of 2 and or increasing powers of the base and add them up. And when you're going in the other way, decimal to binary or decimal to anything, you are dividing by the radix successively until you get a quotient of 0 and you are recording the remainders and writing the remainders in the reverse fashion. Let's do some examples. I will have to keep track of time as well. All right, let's uh, let me. Uh, so I have, a, I have an example over here uh, base 2 to base 10 conversion. And the first thing is. I am claiming that this number 101 is a base 2 number, binary number, is it? Yes, it is because it has symbols that are zeros and ones. How do I convert to base 10? Any to base 10. So all I have to do is take this one, multiply it with 2 raised to 0, take this 0, multiply it with 2 raised to 1, take this one, multiply it with 2 raised to 2, add them up. Add, add, add. What do you get? That would be 4. That would be 2. That would be... Oh, sorry. 2 times 0, right? So, when that is 2, however, this is 1. But, you see this? This multiplied by that. This multiplied by that. And then lastly, you have that multiplied by that. So eventually you have 4 times 1 plus 2 times 0 plus 1 times 1. 5 in decimal. So I would erase this and I would say this is 5. Multiply each bit by increasing powers of 2 because the base is 2 and add them up. Next, base 2 to base 10. This guy has a fraction part. So let's see. What I'm going to do is simply going to write the weights on top of the number. So I've got a weight of 1 here, 2 there, 4 there, 8 there, right, increasing powers of 2, then I've got a half there and a 1 fourth there. And when I multiply each of them, 
with this to add it up what do I have I've got 8 times 1 4 times 1 2 times 0 1 times 1 half times 1 1 fourth times 1 what would that be it would be 8 4 uh, 1 0 0.5 0 0.25 13.75 so I would say all right let me just give that so I hope uh, that these two conversions are uh, straightforward for you now in multiplying by uh, the position so using positional significance how to convert a binary number to uh, the decimal number now one thing that you should note is if we call 42.4 what do we call this guy we call this guy decimal point so what what should we call this guy this is going to be binary point and because it's a binary number so binary point is a implicit representation of that fraction part so it's implicit uh, when you when you look at it in terms of a digital device like a computer they will not be like a point stored in one of the locations in of the in one of the bits so that binary point is an implicit number it's not explicitly part of the number itself so you we, we use a different sort of representation uh, to to represent that binary point so it's implicit is, is what i want you to know right now and it's called binary point okay let's move on here base 10 to base 2 how do you do it successive division let's do a successive division take 56 keep dividing by 2 and record the remainders so 2 times what 28 is 56 remainder is 0 2 times 14 is 28 remainder is 0 2 times 7 is 14 remainder is 0 2 times 3 is 6 remainder is 1 2 times uh, 1 is 2 remainder is 1 that's it that's all we need. that's all we need How do I read it? In the reverse order. So let me highlight that reverse order for you here. Right there. So your answer would be 111000 in binary. Let's check it. How do you check it? Well, what is the weight? 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. When you multiply and add, what do you have? You have 32, 16, 8. What is that? Uh, that should be 56. So you can quickly uh, convert that binary number back to decimal to check your work. So this is check. yes all right let's uh, move on here now we are going to be talking about hexadecimal format this is very useful to represent uh, binary numbers in a very very concise manner so imagine uh, representing a 32-bit number or you know a very very long bit sequence um, and essentially writing each and every bit out that's that is uh, unnecessary actually because what you can do is you can group certain bits 
and represent them in hexadecimal format. The base over here or the radix is going to be 16. It is represented, hexadecimal representations are also called hex representation or base 16 or radix 16 and they start with 0x followed by the representation. The symbols, the 10 symbols from the binary, uh, sorry, decimal number system. And we also have A through F, six uh, symbols that are essentially letters, A, B, C, D, E, F. So there are total of 16 symbols, zero through nine, A through F. Now, a fun activity is, how do you count? How do you count in decimal? Well, you go 0, 1, 2, da, 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 9. After 9 comes what? 10, 11, da, 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 19. What are you doing here? You are cycling through all the symbols, 0 through 9. And then you are incrementing the next most significant digit to the next symbol. So it was zero here, right? It was all zeros there. Zero, 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 blah, 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 zero. You incremented the most significant bit by one and then you cycled through the zero through nine again. And then you kept going down. That's how we counted in decimal. How do you count in binary? Start with zero, then one. What comes next? Well, cycle through, right? And then cycle through and keep going. Now, how do you count in hexadecimal? Zero, one, two, all the way to nine. After nine comes what? A. B, F, all the way down to F. After F comes what? Someone, after F comes what? Yes. One, zero, one, 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 two, and so on up to one, nine, one, A, one, B, 1F, after 1F comes what? Yes, brilliant. So if you know how to count in these number systems, uh, that is a very good indication that uh, you have a really good understanding of the um, fundamentals. Let's move on here. So if those are your symbols, again, using positional number representation, we can uh, convert a hex number to a decimal number. All we have to do is take each uh, hex digit, hex digit, and multiply it with increasing power of 16 and add them up. So for example, if we had this number 8A9B, the moment you take a look at that number, you know that it is not a decimal number. It is not a binary number. Uh, it is going to be most likely a hexadecimal number. Take the number and convert it into decimal. All I have to do is multiply B with 16 raised to 0. 9 with 16 raised to 1, A with 16 raised to 2, and finally I have, well, let me use pink again, 8 with 16 raised to 3. Now, clearly I can perform this and I can perform this. No problem. Those are numbers. I can multiply. I can get the result as uh, that guy and that guy. That's fine. However, a times 16 raised to 2. 
What is that? A needs to be converted into decimal number system. B needs to be converted into decimal number system. So let's take a look here. What is A? Where is A? A is right here. That means 1 after 9. What did we have 1 after 9? We had 10. So when you convert A into decimal number system, it's actually 10. Similarly, B will be 11 and F will be 15 in decimal number system. So instead of B times 16 raised to 0, it's actually 11 times 16 raised to 0. 10 instead of A. And then you add them up, you get your number in decimal. So it's, it's pretty, pretty, um, it's still very easy. All you have to do is do that conversion of each individual hex digit as well. I'm calling them hex digit. So B is what? Least significant hex digit. And then this is 8 is the most significant hex digit for this number. Let's move on. We learned how to count. Now let's take a look at an octal number system. Octal number system has a base or radix of 8. What are the symbols of this number system? Symbols. Octal number system belongs to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 8 symbols, those are 0 through 7. So if I asked you to count in octal number system, how would you count? Well, you would start with 0 all the way. So 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way down to 7. After 7 will be what? Yes, 17, 20, 27, 30 and so on. So that's how you would count in octal number system. So let's do uh, a simple conversion here. How do you convert from base 8 to base 10? Now I'm going to uh, give you guys a moment to sort of uh, correct me because it looks like I have made some some something is wrong so something is wrong with this example and I want you guys to kind of uh, catch me on this brilliant yes there cannot be an 8 in there because the number belongs to, I'm claiming that this is 8. So that means then the digits can only belong to that set. So this is wrong. The question itself is wrong. So let me just go back to one level lower, 47.31. So now it's, it's, it's okay. So let's do this conversion. How do I do it? Any number system to decimal number system. Again, use positional significance. So let's see, let me write this down. 4 times 8 raised to uh, 0, 1 plus 7, 8 raised to 0, 3, 8 raised to negative 1, 1 raised 8, negative 2. So that's how you would convert that. Um, I think what this is 32, this should be 7, this should be, what is that? 3 divided by 8. <laughs> and what is that? 3 divided by 8 and 1 divided by 64. 1 divided by 64 is 0.015625 uh, and 3 divided by 8 
quickly use a calculator here. 0 0.375. Add the numbers up to get your answer, which should be, I believe, 39.C uh, plus. I do 0 0.015625. Okay, uh, I did this in a kind of haste, so I I expect you to check your work to, to check my work on this. But uh, th that's essentially it. Multiply by their respective powers of eight, add the result up. So this is plus here, plus here, plus here. Uh, the integer part I'm pretty sure about, 39, but the fraction part you can, you can check. All right, let's move on. Base eight to base 10 is done. Base 10 to base two, okay? This is a very interesting uh, question here. Let's take a look at a fraction, decimal fraction, how do you convert to binary? Let's do this individually. First, the integer part. Integer part is what, 56. And how do you convert to binary? Well, we have done this particular number before. We successively divide by two and record the rem re remainders in the reverse order. So if I remember correctly, the answer was one, 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 zero, zero, uh, I think three zeros. So zero, zero, zero. So we got eight, 16 and 32. Yes, eight, 16 and 32 will make it. So that's the integer part. So that's good. Let's leave it by the side. Now let's come to the fraction part. For fraction part, what do you have? You have 0 0.34. For the integer part, we were successively dividing by two and recording the remainders. For the fraction part, we have to do the opposite. Multiply by two, because this is two, and keep recording, keep recording, integer part of result. So multiply by two, what do you have? 0 0.68. Next, 0 0.68 multiply by two, what do you have? Uh, 1.2, uh, no. 1.36, 0 0.36 multiplied by two. Once I record it, you see I drop the integer part. 0 0.36 times two, what do I have? 0 0.72, 0 0.72 times what do I have? Two, what is that? 1.44, uh, 0 0.44 times two, what do I have? 0 0.88 and I will keep continuing I will keep on going in this sequence down so the fraction part in the binary number may or may not end which means that there is a possibility that because of you converting it to a, a limited uh, number of bits in the binary representation you might have a precision error in your representation. We'll talk more about that uh, in just a bit, but your answer right now will, will depend on the integer part of the result after you multiply by two. And it keeps going. So the answer over here should be, uh, let's see, erase this guy, move this guy all the way out here. And let's write the result. For the integer part, it was straightforward. One, 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 zero, zero, zero. Binary point, implicit, followed by zero, one, zero, one, zero, and it keeps going.
and keeps keeps going. And again, you can uh, you know stop with certain amount of bits and see by converting it back to decimal, you can check how much error you have. Of course, if you stop at two digits, right? If you had stopped it right there, you would have got 56.25 different from 56.34, right? So depending on how many bits you have allocated for the fraction part, you may get very, very close to the actual decimal number or you may be quite far from the uh, decimal number. So there will be some error in representation. Okay, questions about the uh, the base 10 to base 2? For an uh, integer part as well as the fraction part. Now let's throw a curveball here. How do you convert base 10 to base 5? Well, base can be any number, right? Base 3, base 7, base 11, base 15, anything. All that will change is the number of symbols in that particular representation. So if you wanted to convert base 10 to base 5, how would you do it? Base 10 to base 2, how, would, how did you do it? We did integer part and fraction part separately. In integer part, we divided by the base successively and recorded the remainders. And for fraction part, we multiplied by the base and recorded the integers. Let's do that over here. Same thing. So 56 integer part, keep dividing it by five and record the remainders. Five times 10 is 50, remainder is six. Oh, sorry, I can go one more. Why, why did I stop here? Five times 11 is 55, remainder is one. Next. 5 times 2 is 11, remainder is 1 again. That's it. 2 belongs to the uh, base 5 number system, so I can stop here. I don't need to go one more. I read the answer in the reverse fashion. What is that? It is like that. So for the integer part, it would be 2, 1, 1, base is 5. Just for the integer part of the decimal. Next. 0 0.38, uh, let me use red here. Times five, this is for the fraction part. What do you have? Uh, let's see, 0 0.38 multiplied by five, it is 1.9. 1 1.9 1 .9 times five, oh, sorry, not 1.9. I just, I need to drop the integer part. 0 0.9 times 5 is 4.5 then 0 0.5 times 5 is 2.5 and it keeps going. So what do you have here? You have one, four, two, two, and so on. So your answer, for the fraction part, it is that. Your answer should be, let's move this over here, write the answer. For the integer part, you had two, one, one. For the fraction part, you have one, four, two, two, and it keeps going. So keep multiplying by 5 and record the integer part of the result and then keep going. Again, there will be some uh, precision error due to limited number of bits, uh, for limited number of uh, digits in the base 5 system. All right, questions about uh, this so far. How do you do this? Base 16 to base 10. Anything to base 10 is what? Multiply by 
multiply 8 by 16 raised to 0 1 2 3 plus a what is a instead of a I need to write 10 16 raised to 2 9 16 raised to 1 B instead of B I need to write 11 16 raised to 0 instead of C what should I write instead of C uh, A is 10 B is 11 so C should be 12 16 raised to negative 1 because it is after the hexadecimal point F what should I write for F 15 times 16 raised to negative 2 and once you do this calculation, you can put that answer in your, uh, that, that will be your answer in base 10. I will leave that calculation to you. I'm sure you guys can and can, can uh, do the calculation, but that's essentially what, what it is. Uh, integer, integer part, integer part, integer part. So those are for those four. And then you have fraction part, fraction part for these two guys. Next, base 10 to base 16. Earlier, we multiplied by increasing powers of 16. Now, we need to divide by 16. So let's take 46 and divide by 16 and we'll record the remainders so 16 times uh, 2 is 32 and what is our remainder remainder is uh, 14 that's it so 14 actually is what 14 is uh, F is 15, so 14 should be E. And we write it in the reverse order, right? After we divide. So the answer here should be 2E. So 46 is 2E. Keep dividing by 16 and record the remainders. Um, and you know if this was base 8 how would you do it well keep dividing by 8 and record the remainders I, I I'm, I'm sure you guys get the get how this is going uh, 157 base 9 to decimal number system sure so you can take 7 times 9 raised to 0 5 times 9 raised to 1 1 times 9 raised to 2 7 uh, 45 what is that 81 120 133 very straightforward just a quick exercise forty five to binary number system now let's take a look at how you can do it without having to divide how do I make a forty five? I need 32 what is remaining uh, I have 13 remaining I can do 13 by taking 8 4 and 1 so for 32 I have 1 16 no 16 there 8 is there 4 is there no 2 there is a 1 that's it so this is a you know once you start doing more and more you will get these uh, tricks which will allow you to do this very very quickly um, but you know th that's how you you would do it base 10 to base 3 how would you do it let's just write the answer here keep dividing by 3 and record remainders in reverse order
base 3 belongs to what? 0, 1, 2. So any uh, base 3 number will belong to that set 0, 1, 2. And clearly when you divide by 3, your remainders cannot be 3 or more. It has to be 0, 1 or 2. Here is an interesting question. How do I go from base 9 to base 5? So this is a kind of a, a, a new example, which not a new example, is a different example compared to the things that we have been looking at. How do you go from 58, which is represented in base 9, to base 5? Well, for this, I will use base 10 as my place to jump. So what I'll do is I'll go 58 to base 9 to something in base 10 and I will then convert that to 5. So I'll use base 10 as my uh, intermediate step which is what? This will be uh, 8 times 9 raised to 0 plus 5 times uh, 9 raised to 1 which is uh, what 45 plus 8 which is 53 and then I can convert 53 to uh, base 5 by dividing by 5 uh, so 10 5 times 10 is 50 oh sorry I need to go, yeah, 3 is your remainder, 5 times 2 is 10, remainder is 0. So your answer will be 203 in base 5. So I, I hope you see how you can go from any number system to any number system. Just use decimal number system as your intermediate step, 9 to 10, 10 to 5. Now, there is a um, very easy way to convert uh, between number systems that have a base of 2, 4, 8, 16 and so on. So this is octal and this is hexadecimal format. This is of course binary. Now the trick is that base 2 has just one possibility, 0 or 1, 1 bit. Base 4, you have four different, uh, four different possibilities. The, the numbers in decimal would be 0, 1, 2, 3. In binary, that is represented as 0, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 1, 1. For octal number system, you have eight different possibilities. For hexadecimal, you have 16 different possibilities. So, over here, we are listing decimal numbers on the rightmost column, 0 to 15. There is their corresponding hex digits from 0 to F and their binary representations using 4 bits, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to 1, 1, 1, 1. Um, notice over here, the way you can easily write this is by alternating the least significant digit, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and so on. Next to that, you go 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on. Next to that is 4 zeros, 4 ones, and so on. And after that, you have 8 zeros and 8 ones, and so on. So there is a pattern to this. You can, you can uh, leverage that to quickly write that out. But the bottom line is with 4 bits you can represent all the 16 hexadecimal numbers, 0 all the way to F. So if you were asked to convert any hexa or any binary number to hexadecimal format, all you have to do is group the numbers in 4, groups of 4, starting from all the way to the right and then move left. In case you have some gap, fill in zeros. Uh, that's it. So let, let us do an example here. Let us represent coffee in binary. 
in this case this is a zero not an o and as you know everything else is a hexadecimal digit so how do you go from 16 to by 16 to binary we expand each hex digit in four bits so starting from c what is c c is 13 in decimal which is what one uh, one zero one in binary f is one 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 in binary e is one 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 zero in binary so how do i expand it simply c first one 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 zero one after that you have zero which means four zeros after that a b c oh yeah you're right c is 12. this becomes a zero f and e are okay one one zero zero after that zero f is what one 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 another f one 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 and e one 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 zero another e one 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 zero that would be your answer for coffee in binary very easy right you are all you are doing is expanding expanding into four bits How about this? How about base 2 to base 16? Well, in the previous example, you expanded into 4 bits. Now, you are going to have to group in 4 bits. Starting from left. Add zeros to make complete group so let's highlight them this is 4 and this is another 4 I don't even need to add zeros over here because they are nicely in two groups of 4 what are the numbers here? 0, 1, 1, 0 is actually 6. And 1, 0, 1, 1 is what? B. See, 1, 0, 1, 1 in binary is uh, 10, 11 in decimal number system is B in hexadecimal number system. So you would say this is B6. So one is expand in group of four and the other one is to group in groups of four. Starting from left. So uh, I will, you know, leave this. Essentially, this slide says for converting between bases, like we did from 9 to 5, use the decimal number system as an intermediary. So 9, base 9 to base 10 to base 5. But for conversion among bases that are of the order 2 raised to n, which means binary, hexadecimal, octal, base 4, what you can do is essentially group and expand 4 bits at a time. Group and expand three bits at a time, group and expand, two bits at a time, and so on. Uh, I, I will uh, do that as an example here. Over here, we have decaf, which is another hexadecimal number, and we are asked to convert it into an octal number system. 
So I would go base 16 to base 2 to base 8. So I will use my base 2 as an intermediary over here. So how do I go to base 2? Well, expand, right? Expand in 4 bits. Okay, so let's do that. Um, D, well, let, let me start with F. F is 1, 1, 1, 1. Uh, A is 10. C is 12. E is 14. Uh, D should be 13. So that's in binary number system. Next, to, so we got this. Next, we need to go to group base 8. How do I go to base 8? We group in three bits again starting from the uh, starting from the right okay I need to change this here I started from the right all the way from the right so I, I start here and move left so when you group in three bits because base 8 means eight different possibilities two raised to eight two raised to three i have this then i've got that then i've got that then i've got that Okay, I need to add a zero here because I'm missing a zero at the front. So I'll add a zero there and group it. This is seven, five, two, six, six, three, three. I'm essentially converting binary, each of those binary numbers into decimal numbers. That, that's exactly what I did. 111 in binary is 7 in octal number system and so on. So my answer here will be what? My answer will be 3366257 in octal number system. All right. Let us uh, stop over here. Um, we will uh, revisit number systems uh, when we meet again.